Good morning, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our Friday morning coffee chat. My name's Rod. I'm the founder of the Learn to Paint Academy and the Artist Business Academy. And uh, welcome. This is our regular Friday morning session where uh, you get to ask me any questions at all about painting, learning to paint, uh, the Learn to Paint Academy, the business side of art, whatever you want to chat about. Um, I'll try and answer it for you if I can. Um, if I can't, I'll let you know. Morning, Rosalie in Dago. Welcome. And who else do we have here? Morning, Sharon in New Zealand. And uh, Sherlyn in New Louisiana. Uh, morning, Marie in New Hampshire. Welcome. Good to see you. In the middle of making dinner. Hope you're making something good. G'day, Gail from sunny Georgia. Gary, good morning. Um, Nina in San Diego, welcome. Warm and balmy, that's how we like it. Morning, Jenny on the Gold Coast. Beautiful day yesterday, wasn't it? Gonna be another good day today, I think. Morning, Janet in Fort Wayne. G'day, Gary. And Tatiana from steamy South Florida, welcome. Morning, Magdalene in Tassie. Carleen in Sydney, welcome. Manju in Ontario, welcome. Sajada in Nevada, g'day. Linda in BC, welcome. G'day Gail in Geelong. Cold and windy, I bet. Margaret in Gosford. Carleen says, may your day be filled with happiness and creativity. Well, you too, Carleen. And uh, somebody by the handle of BMB2009 in Ontario, welcome. G'day Peter in NZ and Donna in Cairns, welcome. Where are we up to here? Morning Yvonne in WA and Mary in the Midlands of Ireland, welcome. G'day Sandy in North Dakota and Lily in Greenvale, North Queensland, welcome. Tanya in Canberra, uh, struggling with the cold, having been in Cairns for two weeks. Yeah, I bet. I remember when I went to Port Douglas one time in the middle of Melbourne winter, and it was glorious. And then we came back, and as we were landing into Melbourne, the uh, the pilot made an announcement saying, you know, welcome back to Melbourne, and it's um, six degrees and sleeting, you know, and I thought, oh my God. Hence the reason why I live in Noosa now. Morning, Tanya, I said hi to Tanya. G'day, Pauline in Wales, welcome. Colin in Depto, good to see you, buddy. Morning, Anne. Morning, Chrissy in Woolen. Wollong Bar, Northern New South Wales. Sparkling, I bet it is, beautiful. Um, cool, okay, well good to see you all. Um, um, where are we up to? Jenny said 24 degrees yesterday, went to Burley Beach and watched the waves, yeah, beautiful. Not bad for autumn, except that it's still winter, Jenny. <laughs> it's officially still winter in June. So it would be good for autumn, but it's damn good for winter. Hey, Cindy in Ontario. Gary says, I can't get the new content up on BA, uh, the headers there. Um, the two new courses I put up the, the badges for, there's no content in those at all, Gary. It's just at this stage to start selling your art. And module two um, is now live, and I'll go through that in a second. Sonia said, good morning everyone, received my coffee cup yesterday, terrific. Having a lovely hot cup of now, very good. Hey Sandy in Ontario. <laughs> I know you meant that, Jenny. Uh, g'day Steve in Bell River, Ontario. Hey Lexi. And morning Barbara, in Mornington Peninsula, good to see you. Okay, well I've got a couple of little things to go through um, this morning and then we'll just open up the questions. See how we go, we'll get rid of that. We don't need that there anymore. Um, yeah, so, the, I mean, we're just touching on what Gary was talking about there. I'll just talk about new content that's been loaded up into the members uh, site. So we'll start off with the Learn to Paint Academy. Do, 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 do. Boop, ba, doop, ba, doop. Hang on one second, folks. Kapow, there we go. Learn to Paint Academy. Um, hang on, I've got this funky new there you go. <laughs> um, 
So we'll just log into the members area. I just want to show you some new content that we've recently added. This is part of the fundamentals program. Um, so if you if you join for the fundamentals program, or you're a full access member, you know um, monthly members, um, life members, MCIs, that sort of thing. Um, if you come in here, doo -doo -doo -doo, it's going to be on page three. Okay. So this is the values course, which was the last part of the uh, fundamentals program that I needed to put together. So with any of the fundamentals courses, particularly the composition and design, the values course, which we're just looking at now, and also the color mixing course, um, those three courses, um, I guess where they're at right now is they're what I'd call a phase one, right? So they're, um, they're the introductory overview material information you need to start thinking about and improving in those areas. Um, my plan is to keep coming in or to come back into these courses and develop more content in there, which will be a, a phase two, which will take it to a deeper uh, understanding, you know, deeper level. So let's just, so this is the new values course and um, it's, uh, it's a fair bit in there. So there's an introduction to values, you know, what are values, five value scale, 10 value scale, all the resources, so the PDF documents from the lessons are in the resources section there. Okay, so you can download those there. And those five values and 10 value scales are probably worth printing off and putting up in your studio wall. Um, color and values, I think this is a big one. I think this is the, the, uh, the one area that Trump trips a lot of people up when it comes to values is they're looking at everything in color so they're trying to they intellectually understand values the concept darkness to lightness and so on and contrast but when they go and try and convert that into a painting using color um, that's where I think a lot of us and myself in particular um, when I started out we get caught up in understanding how color relates to values so I've gone in this new course into a fair bit of detail about that, right? Um, so I'll just open up one of these and just quickly show you. Uh, so this content's available now. Um, so you can see just in this video here, I talk about if you were to convert each of our colors, which is our main palette that we talk about the Learn to Paint Academy, ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson, yellow ochre, lemon yellow or cadmium yellow light, and phthalo or viridian green, right? If you were to convert those into their equivalent gray scale, to see what the true value is, you can see them there. And so how does, how does that translate into understanding with color and so on? So um, there's a fair bit in there about color and values. And then I've also then gone in and put in a section here, analysis of master artist paintings. And, um, and we look at, I've got four different ones in there, we might add more later on. But we look at master artist painting, like this Arthur Streeton painting, and convert that into um, black and white and we can and we've studied the value structure behind these paintings right so I'll go on that in a fair bit of detail for you as well and then we then mix up a five value scale and we do these little painting demos the idea of these little painting demos now it looks like this is all yeah, a little bit out of sequence I'll have to fix that up today um, the idea of these little painting demos is just to really make marks where the dark and light passages are. So we're not trying to recreate those paintings. It's just putting marks down where we feel they are. And then we've got a couple of studies, 10 minute studies, and I'll give you a range of photos to continue on doing those studies. I think that resources needs to come down, so I'll get that fixed up. So if you have a look here, you can see this little um, farmland um, photo that we use. How do we convert that into a little black and white study, right? Just And the idea of this study is really just to see where the passages of dark and light are and to be able to accurately place them on your painting surface, right? So it's not it's not about recreating or, or doing a finished painting at all. It's just little studies that will help embed the intellectual knowledge that we gain through this information, help embed that into our practical application of this information. So, um, so that's the values course. And as I said, it's one of the fundamental, it's the last of the fundamentals courses I have been planning to create, but the content in here is really a phase one. There's more 
information about values to be added. Um, the same with the composition course and the color mixing course, right? And I'll be adding to those over the next year, um, and I'll let you know as I add bits and pieces of content to it. And in particular, as I learn things and as I improve my knowledge and, and so on, then that's when we'll be adding info in there, right? So that's pretty exciting. If you're a Fundamentals Program member or Life member, etc., cetera, um, then you'll have access to that now. So jump on in there. The other one is the Artist Business Academy. Okay, I'll just come in here quickly. <coughs> and you can see I've added in a, a Business Fundamentals and a Mindset for Success um, programs, there's no content in these at all, right? The idea of these two is I'm going to um, record maybe one or two videos in these two courses every week or two and drop them in to those, right? So there's nothing in there just yet, just letting you know what's coming. The business fundamentals will just be each video will talk about a different concept, like being how to be more productive in what you're doing each day, um, understanding business models and how to get leverage with what you're doing. Um, that type of thing. The mindset will be all about you know, what's in your head, <laughs> what you think and believe, right? So they're coming, um, but they, they'll be just drip fed. You know, Every week or two, I'll add a video or two into each of those. Uh, the main course we're working on right now is the Selling Your Art course. Okay, And um, I've just released the first part of module two. Okay, So module one was all about inventory and production of new art. Module two, is about now starting to promote that artwork into marketplaces. And um, we'll go through a fair bit of information here. And down the bottom here, you can see we're talking about eBay, starting to list your, uh, your artwork up in eBay. And in about two weeks' time, I'll release more content into Module 2, which will be focused on Etsy, right? So there'll be half a dozen videos on Etsy as well. So Module 2 is going to be quite a long one, but there's a fair bit involved. And then in about a month's time, we'll release module three, um, which is going to be all about uh, building an audience, social media and attracting an audience to you, right? And this, module three, I think, is really the long-term business building, right? The, the long-term plan of building a, a business around your art is not going to be focused on a platform like an eBay or an Etsy, right? It's going to really be about attracting an audience, people who know you, love you, they love your artwork, and they become raving fans, right? Um, and knowing how to do that, because platforms will come and go, opportunities will come and go. So being able to be flexible enough to move from one platform to another is important, or to be across multiple platforms, but the core thing that drives an art business is having attracted to you a group of people who just love what you do and they and they want to be involved and they want to buy your artwork and whatever else you want to add to that later on. So that's in the Artist Business Academy, um, just as a little bit of an update. Um, so if you're a member of the Artist Business Academy, you can go and check that out. Uh, if you're in the Learn to Paint Academy, then you can go and check out the Values uh, course. Um, so let me just catch up on comments here. Uh, g'day, Barb in Brisbane. Hey, Becky in o Oklahoma. Gary has a scale under the glass on his palette. Very good. Uh, Peter said, have started re revisiting this course. Looks great. Back to basics. <coughs> yep. And the thing, like, I I'm a great believer in constantly going back to basics. But getting it to a point where it moves from an intellectual understanding to a practical application, right? That's the real key, isn't it? It's one thing about it. It's a bit like playing golf. I reckon golf is such a great analogy for life. Um, you can buy every book on golf that's out there. You can buy all the DVDs. You can watch all the tournaments on pay TV and whatever. And you can become a theoretical about golf. You could sit around with your buddies and talk about golf to see what Tiger Woods did in his long drive down the fairway with his three wood. and You could actually sound like you know a bit about golf, right? But if you've never picked up a club and swung it at a ball, then you, you know nothing about golf, right? And the first time you go and you place that little ball on a tee, a little piece of wood, and you stick it in some grass and you're outside the clubhouse where all the members are in the bar watching you, right? And you've got a, a stiff breeze blowing in and half a dozen people waiting behind you to, to, for their turn, chance to tee off. And then you swing that club for the very first time, it's a completely different experience, right? You realize that 
intellectual knowledge doesn't account for much of your success in anything in life. It's important, but we need that practical application. So how do we translate that across, map it across, right? So I think obviously pushing pain around in our environment is um, is the best way, right? Is to, to, to study and get the intellectual um, understanding, but the real magic is when you put that into practical application and you start to demonstrate that in your paintings and all of a sudden your paintings start to work better. They've got more depth and atmosphere and volume to them. Um, so I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but <laughs> um, Tatiana says, I've just finished the values course working on exercises and small studies. Very encouraging and helpful. Good on you, Tatiana. I love the fact that you've done the exercises. That's awesome. Hey, Foxy. G'day, Merrill in Meriden, WA. Batcha, just finished module one and working on the action steps. Very helpful and doable. Fantastic. I assume you mean the uh, Artist Business Academy, Batcha. Uh, that's awesome. Gary says, a golf, a good walk ruined by golf. Yes. Very easy to become obsessed with golf, I found out in my early 20s. <laughs> that I realized I had a golfing problem. I haven't played since, but... You know, I haven't with, I, I had some buddies who played golf, you know, we're in our early 20s and stuff. And I wasn't really a fan of golf, to be honest. But there was one time we went out and we played golf and it was up on a hill and the, the, the hole, whatever you call it, was down low. And I hit this ball, it was one shot. Every other shot was a disaster. But this one shot, the ball just sailed up into the air. It just hung there in the, you know, with a bit of a breeze coming towards. It hung there and it just went and it landed an inch away from the hole. I think it was a three par um, hole. And uh, that one shot made me absolutely hooked and obsessed about golf for about two years. And uh, that's two years of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> but it's amazing how, like the same thing with painting, you do one good painting and it fuels you and encourages you and inspires you to get to the next one, right? Um, only painting's not necessarily an unhealthy habit, whereas... Um, Golf can be. <laughs> Where are we up to here? G'day, Winnie. How are you? Hey, Celine. Hey, Becky in Wisconsin. Hey, Wendy in Ontario. Pauline says, how do you manage to balance the teaching side of your business with your own art, personal art and selling? You must be working long hours to produce a comprehensive variety of quality courses. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty busy, actually, Pauline. Um, so I probably work about 50 hours a week. And to be honest, my personal painting has suffered this year um, as the Learn to Paint Academy has grown bigger. Um, and I'm not doing anywhere near as much painting and selling of my own painting as I'd like to. Um, so it's dropped back a bit from a couple of years ago, definitely. Um, so I'm in the process right now of um, looking at all the activities that I do and engaging people like virtual assistants to take over a lot of the admin stuff and customer support type stuff um, and replacing myself out of a lot of the jobs that I'm doing in the business to free up more time. Um, but the other thing is like the business that I'm building, like with the Learn to Paint Academy and the artist business, there's a lot of front end work. But once I've built out the courses, I mean, I'm, I'm getting to the point with the Learn to Paint Academy where... I can't really build more courses beyond where I'm at right now because I need to take another quantum leap or another big jump forward in my own painting and my own understanding to have more information about to teach. And that's now getting into more sort of advanced concepts like, um, yeah, so I need to grow as an artist before I can really teach more. So I've sort of got to the point with the Learn to Paint Academy where there's probably not going to be a lot more that I teach because I, ju I need to grow a lot more as an artist before I can sort of bring the courses up to that level, if that makes sense. Um, so there won't be a lot of new courses coming out in the Learn to Paint Academy over the next year. It'll be adding content to the fundamentals courses. Um, I'm thinking about doing a, a like a 10-day or a 14-day uh, live challenge workshop thing around landscape painting where we break it down to different elements. Um, so that'll become a course, the recordings of that. And maybe next year at some stage we'll do a similar thing for Seascape. Um, beyond that, 
I need to grow before I can really create more courses. So you won't see a lot of new courses coming through the Learn to Paint Academy, but I don't think we need them anyway. There's so much in there. Um, and so the Artist Business Academy is something I enjoy, so we're going to um, create the courses for that. And um, once that's built out, probably by this time next year, then my time will be freed up a lot, you know, and I'll have other people running a lot of the business. So that'll en enable me to get back into doing more of my own painting and, and uh, my own selling of my own artwork. G'day, John. Hey, Anna, great story, yes, and yes, golf the, and painting, yes. <laughs> Anna can relate. Hey, Beverly. Hey, Cecile in Ontario. Morning, Kathy in North Dakota. I had to stop work on a painting to go to my grandson's baseball game. Very good. You've got to get your priorities right, Kathy. Grandson's baseball game is far more important. Hey, Alison in New Zealand. I did your five day challenge in lockdown last year. I'm going to begin again this year with a no excuses attitude to committing to practice. Beginning again. Good on you, Alison. That's the, uh, that's the way. I've had to restart a number of times with a number of things in life. Where are we up to here? Morning, Julie Mallow. How are you? Hope you're well. Hey, Teresa. Late, but I made it. A beautiful Thursday night here in Nova Scotia. Beautiful. Julie said, was just watching the values course last night. Very informative. Fantastic, Julie. I like your dedication. Um, Beverly joined the fundamentals course last night. Terrific, Beverly. That's awesome. Welcome. <laughs> Julie says, the shot that cost you. Yeah, cost me two years of my life. <laughs> um, Beverly says, still watching the overview videos, anxious to start the courses. I'm also addicted to golf as well as painting. Well, you would probably relate to that one shot then, Beverly. There's always that one shot. G'day, Gary. I know you're a landscaper, dabbler in seascapes, but any plans on urban neighborhood painting? Always good to get inspiration where you live, and for many, that's a city or the birth. Gary, you know, that's a really interesting comment um, or question. Um, I do like the idea of um, doing like pen and ink wash type things and gouache and sketchbook type work. So, yeah, that's a possibility for a course sometime next year. Um, but I'm actually working with a guy, I'm, I'm coaching him one on one. He's building an art school online. And he is, uh, hey Dawu, if you're watching, um, he is a um, he teaches drawing, right? And it's, it's kind of an urban sketching, drawing type of thing. Sits on a train and he draws people out and stuff and then puts a bit of watercolour in. And he's really good. So um, maybe when I help him get his, his online art school up and running, um, he might do a you know, special price for, for our, our members and I'll let you know about it. Um, but yeah, I do like the idea of doing a course like that, but I can't see myself doing it until sometime next year, just with what's going on over the next six months. The other course that I, uh, and subject matter, that I'm particularly probably keen to do is sort of semi-abstract floral scenes. I, I quite like that idea. And maybe we'll start dropping in a few uh, paintings into our live streams doing that type of, um, type of subject as well. Um, so yeah, there's possibilities, but I'm, I'm sort of sort of at that point where I've I, I feel like I've I've given as much as I uh, have got at the moment, if you know what I mean. At, at the risk of just repeating myself over and over, um, that you know I want to keep it fresh, keep it new as well. Um, where are we? Do you have any courses to help with selecting colours, colour schemes for more impressionistic or abstract work? Pretty much everything I do is impressionistic, um, Celine, and bordering on semi-abstract. Semi so the colour mixing course is the course that um, I'd recommend. Um, you know, we've got a complete course on colour and colour mixing, which goes through the palette that I use for landscape impressionistic painting. Um, so that's where I'd start. And, and as I said, I'll be adding more content to that as we... Um, grow and develop in the next year. Hey Tracy in the cold bay. Linda says, love the floral abstract idea. I do too. I just have to free up some time for that. <coughs> um, where are we up to here? Caroline says, when my dad was alive and he couldn't go golfing anymore, 
he learned how to play Wii Golf. Very good. Nice. Jenny said, I was going to ask that question. The LPTA is very time consuming for you. I was thinking your personal art must be suffering. It, it has suffered, it just I don't have the time available for it. Um, however, you know, that's sometimes we have to make sacrifices and um, you know, the, the good thing about the Learn to Paint Academy is that I've now built over 50 courses and you know, so we'll add another few in the next year to 18 months and we'll improve some of them. But once they're built, you know, it sort of frees me up to to do other things. So, um, so I'm working on a long term plan of building out the L2PA and then the Artist Business Academy, and um, you know, and then getting people to run them, so I don't have to do all the day to day sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, it's a longer term plan there. Gary said I have to teach my domestic manager how to do the photography and inventory work. That's six hours a month. Yes, well, if you can get somebody to, uh, I mean, outsource everything you possibly can, right? Um, I've talked about my friend Jose Trujillo, um, who is just a master at eBay, right? So he has three or four people who package up all his paintings that are sold. He has somebody who photographs them. So, you know, the bigger uh, you get, the more you want to outsource that stuff so that all he does is paint for eight hours a day. Gail said, I love your honesty, Rod. I know art teachers who pretend they know everything. Yeah, no, I don't know much, really. <laughs> I know enough to sort of get to where we've got to. But the thing I've found is that the more I've learned, the more I've realised how little I know. And when I started out, I maybe wasn't as humble when I started. I thought that there wasn't that much to know and I'd be all over this painting thing in, in you know, a couple of months, right? Um, but you realize it, it becomes an expansive body of knowledge rather than a one that you sort of eventually reach a point where you know everything. Um, and I like that. That's an exciting thing um, for me um, because it becomes a lifelong journey then. Gary said, yes, I agree. We don't need more courses. There is more in there than anyone can get through in three years. Well, it's probably true, Gary, if you include all the uh, painting projects and the three years worth of live streams and the challenges and things like that, that's probably true. I, I do feel that the landscape and seascape paintings I did was about eight years ago, and obviously I've improved a lot since then. So I'm considering doing a like a landscape master class and then a seascape one. But the way I'll do it is as a 10 to 14 day live challenge. We'll make it free for everyone to be on the live. And then once that's over, similar to the way we did the Unleash one, once that's over, it'll go in as a course into the Learn to Paint Academy. And um, if you want access to it after that, you'd need to be a member. But yeah, you're right. There's, um, there's enough courses and things there. Um, so just some of them need updating, I think is probably the thing as I've developed. So Jada said, love the challenges, gives additional inspiration to paint and see tons of different perspectives. Very true, Sajada. Yeah, I enjoy it too. Sonia said, question ABA module one, naming paintings. How do I name a landscape that is an imaginary location? Um, well, you just make it up. Like, if you, it depends on what the landscape is. I mean, he, take a photo of it, Sonia, and send it to me on email. Rodmoreart at gmail.com. I think you've already got my email. If you do that now, then I'll have a look at it and we'll bring it up on screen and we'll get everyone to give it a name. If, you, if, you, if you're happy to do that. Um, so, got plenty of time, got half an hour left of the live, so if you want to, shoot me through the photo, I'll bring it up on screen so we can all see it and then we can all have a go at naming it for you. And that'll give you ideas on how to go about naming an imaginary location, right? Morning, Jenny. Catherine said, hey everyone, G's finally got this log. Very good, Catherine. Good to have you back. Carlin said, well, Rod, you are branching out in many directions. Uh, not really. Not really. I mean, we're doing the Learn to Paint Academy and the Artist Business Academy. Um, and my own painting, so I don't know that we're going in that many directions. Um, the floral is something that I've, I've done a few floral paintings and enjoyed, so I want to put that in. Um, I need to clone myself. Yeah, I, what I need really is virtual assistants to do... Uh, everyday stuff, which 
there's a fair bit involved. There's a lot involved behind the scenes with what I do. Um, so I need to get myself out of doing a lot of that and get, get some virtual assistance. So I'm working on that at the moment. Catherine said, you've seriously been keeping yourself busy. I have, and I wouldn't have it any other way, Catherine. Jenny said, I decided to do a chart with my acrylic colours, mixing them up, changing the values, taking notes, makes a huge difference when you can see how they dry and get darker. Absolutely, Jenny. In fact, in the colour mixing course, it's one of the things that we really focus in on is doing colour mixing charts. And um, there are some more that I want to add into that course as well. So um, it's so important to do. Peter said, having had them for a while, what are your impressions of the rosemary brushes? To be honest, Peter, I haven't really used them. There's one that I use, which is out in the other studio. Um, and look, it's okay. I don't know that it's much better than a cheaper one. <coughs> um, it's okay, yeah. Uh, I might buy a different range, because I think I probably bought the wrong range of rosemary brushes. I used them just to demonstrate in that brushes course. Um, so I think I might buy a different range and really give them a proper go. But I haven't really used them that much, to be honest. Um, yeah. I'll get back to you on that, Peter. <laughs> Meryl says, do you have a studio in Noosa where people can meet you and see your paintings? I have two separate friends heading Noosa soon. One from Sydney, one from Dubai. Um, Meryl, not really, no. I don't operate as a, as a, like a retail place that you can just drop into. Um, in fact, I discourage um, people coming because most of the time it's in a complete and utter mess, so I'd have to clean everything up. Um, and uh, because I, I, if you saw how much I got through in a day, <laughs> and I'm, I'm often filming and videoing here, and, and I've had people drop in unannounced um, while I'm right in the middle of filming, and, um, and that just throws me off, and it can take me time to get back into that rhythm. So because... Right at the moment, I'm in building and growth mode. I'm not really in trying to exhibit and be a gallery and stuff mode. So um, probably not, you know, unless they've seen one of my paintings on my rodmore.art and they, and they want to come and see it in person to buy it, then sure. Um, but if they're just coming just to have a general look, no, not really. Um, it just doesn't fit in with where I'm at right now. And I don't operate as a retail uh, environment, basically, yeah. Um, Jenny said, love the challenges, really make you focus. Yes, they do. They do indeed. Cindy says, appreciate all the work you've done in LTPA, a couple of years to retirement, and then want to really focus on painting. So happy to be a life member. That's awesome, Cindy. It's good to know that you've got that sort of time coming up where you can uh, free up from work and um, really concentrate on painting. That's awesome. Carlin said, there is so much to try and retain. Hard to retain. There is, Carlin, and... Repetition's the key. Um, so even though I do repeat myself a lot, I think part of the reason for that is I'm not only am I retraining myself through repetition, but also hopefully you guys as well, yeah? Um, Gary said, I'm keen to do those value studies, but I'm torn between creating a portfolio and study work. I need to make a time budget because doing the study work will speed up the portfolio production. Yeah, I mean, to balance, um, I always like to try and, um, not that I have a lot of time to do so, but I like on a weekly basis, right, um, to spend X number of hours studying, like going through a course and learning information, and um, on top of that, doing some studies, so not paintings that you're trying to finish, but trying to just work things through like a value study. So, you know, if, you, if you're going to paint for 20 hours a week, then I'd be doing three hours of that type of activity, right? And that frees you then up to do your creating a portfolio. But where, where you're at right now, Gary, is that you focus on getting ready to launch onto eBay. Um, so stay with that focus. You can come back to the value studies once you've gotten to a rhythm with um, producing and listing your paintings in, in a month or two's time. Manju said, wish I had more time to go through all the courses on LTPA. Sometimes I need to go back on ones already completed, find more techniques. Yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? You go back through something, and the first time around you got a certain um, understanding. The second time you go through it, you hear completely different things. Like, at the moment, I'm, um, I'm trying to improve my knowledge around business and 
how to grow a business. So I'm involved in a mentoring group with a guy in America. And he, you know, so much content there that every, every time I go through something, I hear completely different things. And usually it's what you need to hear at the time, right? Because your brain's looking for it. So Catherine said he's always working. Yes. Jenny said, I know you don't use mediums a lot as you mostly use WMOs for your final paintings, but I find acrylic dries so flat using just water, even though I do varnish, is more than one cone of varnish better to lift the color. Um, I don't know that extra coats of varnish will, will bring the color up more, uh, Jenny. Um, I think you know the first coat of varnish will brighten it up a little bit, but the second coat may not necessarily. Um, so what you probably want to do is if you, it could be the quality of the acrylics you're using. I don't know what you're using. But if you think it's the water, then just buy a medium for uh, increasing the flow or the, you know, lowering the viscosity. And you can get like a gloss medium to mix in. So rather than using water to thin the paint, buy a medium to thin the paint. You know, so if you're using Artillery Interactive, they have um, gloss mediums that you can use just to thin the paint out, right? And, that, and, and just experiment and see whether that brings up the colours. But the problem with acrylics is they dry flat. They dry a bit dull and a bit flat, and that's why I, you know, I think water mixed oils is a far better option. Manju said I picked up some disposable painting mixing palette paper for WMO. Not very happy. The paint on the paper dries up really fast. Am I doing something wrong? You mean like a tear off palette? Have I got one here? No. Um, if you mean like a tear off palette, then the Water mixed oil shouldn't be drying fast at all. That should be drying over a couple of days. But um, yeah, if you're using Artillery Interactive, Jenny, then get one of their mediums that has a gloss finish and use that to thin the paint down and, and just experiment with that. Now, the only thing is with the Artillery Interactive, if you use their gloss medium, right, it will, um, some of them will, will uh, stop it from being rehydratable. You know how the, the advantage of Artillery is that it can be rehydrated, right? Um, but some of their mediums that they sell actually s prevent them from being rehydrated. So you just have to make sure you read the label and jump on their website, Artelia Interactive website or Chromo, whatever it is, and do some research. Um, the tear-off palettes, Manju, should not be drying out fast. Um, depends on what you mean by dries really fast. Do you mean over two or three days? Um, because that's probably the typical drying time. Um, <coughs> all right, let me jump across to Facebook. Crikey. Um, do you have any causes to help? So I could answer that one. Let's see, I have a painting where I use white water mixable oil paint and applied it with a palette knife. It's now three weeks and it's still not dry. It feels tacky. I'm wondering if I could apply the varnish yet or do I have to wait until it's totally dry? Um, white takes time to dry and if you've you applied it with a palette knife, you probably put it on fairly textured. So you're just gonna have to wait and have a couple of weeks for it to properly dry, unfortunately. Try and avoid using white as much as we can. That's um, you know uh, something that I've really learned over recent times. Um, but yeah, white will take time to dry, so give it another week or two. But it doesn't need to be cured so dry is if you touch it, like you put your finger on it, um, that it, you don't get paint on your finger, right? So it gets this skin over it. So that's the first stage of drying. And um, once it gets to that point, I varnish it at that point. Pauline said, have you found the pandemic has brought more students to your academy with more people realizing they have more time to finally get down to learn to paint? Uh, y yes, for a couple of months last year. I don't know that it's necessarily flowed through, Pauline, but yeah, a couple of months last year, we had a bit of a bump in um, people showing interest, yeah. Rosalie said, I've just heard this quote yesterday, you don't know what you don't know until you know it. <laughs> How true is that? Yes. Alan said, I love your honesty, Alison, I love your honesty, and you're such a relatable, nice guy. You inspire me as I'm an older learner who now believes I can paint with your guidance. That's fantastic, Alison. Thank you, appreciate that. Lindley said, do you ever include old rusty vehicles into your painting? Not really, Lindley. Um, it's not quite my, it doesn't quite jazz me to, to want to paint it. Um, same with old windmills and things. But I know artists who do paint those sort of things. That sort of classic Australiana look and feel, but just doesn't really give me that much of a buzz. Actually, there was an old um, truck that's between here and, you Monday and I was going to stop and get a photo, but unfortunately it's disappeared. 
Kathy said, I've ordered water mixed boils. What do I need to use as mediums and to clean brushes? Uh, looking forward to their arrival. Kathy, first thing I'd recommend is go through our water mixable oils course in the Learn to Paint Academy. Um, but basically, I've, I only use water. So I thin the paint down with water. I do have a medium, but I hardly ever use it these days. Um, and to clean the brush, hot water, just run it under hot water um, with a bit of soap. But I do that like once every two or three weeks. Otherwise, I just swish it around in a bucket of water and pull it through with a uh, paper towel. Hey Diana, good morning from Flagstone near Bow Desert. I have a question. I am entering some of my art in the Jim Boomba art show this weekend and I'm a bit concerned about that the backs of my canvases are a bit scrappy with paint smears and probably fingerprints. Uh, I am guessing this will detract from potential sales. Um, if it's on the back, I can't imagine why it would detract from sales um, because people aren't going to pick up your paintings and look at the back. Uh, however, you know, one of Australia's um, most popular artists currently <coughs> is Brett, what's his name? Um, <coughs> pardon me, Brett Whitley or Whiteley or, anyway, I can't think of his name. But anyway, he had a massive big exhibition down at the Brisbane Art Gallery, huge paintings. And um, the way he finished off the edges of his paintings was just, he didn't. They were just a mess. So, you know, uh, I don't know that it matters. Um, so I wouldn't be too concerned if it's on the back. Paul had said, uh, yeah. but Lindley, I'm using laminated paper for a palette. If it gets too bad, I throw in laminate another sheet of paper. Good idea, Lindley. Nana Marge, Rod, with the varnish, what are your thoughts on the spray on finish? That's what I use, Mar Nana Marge. I use spray on varnish. So um, my thoughts are that that's good. That's good. Um, I'm, I'm going back here. Linda says, thinking of switching to WMO, do I need a whole different set of brushes and working in acrylics? Um, yes, I would get a different set of brushes, but you only need three or four brushes. Um, so yeah, keep one for your acrylics and one for your water mix oils, definitely. And says, when describing a painting to put on eBay and the filters ask, for example, colour, how do you give a landscape a single... I, I don't. I ignore that um, part of it. And um, in the ABA, I just released yesterday a video on listing your art on eBay. Um, so go back and watch that video um, and uh, you'll see exactly how I, I actually go through the step of listing a painting. So you'll see how I do it. Um, but there are some things I just completely ignore, like colour. How do you give a landscape a single colour? And realism or illusion always confuses me a bit. Um, well, looking at your paintings, I wouldn't say they're either. I would say you're more of a impressionist style painter, Anne. So watch the video that I put in there yesterday. Colin said, the flowers you did write in the water mixable oil course and the still life course was so enjoyable and instructive. The floral abstract idea mentioned earlier would be great. Good on you, Colin. I'll, I've got it on my list. I've got a big list, but it's on the list. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Teresa said, so I've had a chance to check out some books you've written. You said you wrote a few. That's an understatement. Impressive. Um, Very good, Teresa. Um, I'm not sure how you would have found the books I've written because um, they shouldn't be out there. I've, I've got a couple under a different name, um, you know, fiction books. Linda said, can you use the same retarder in WMO as acrylic? You don't need a retarder for WMO. You only need it for acrylics, okay? Um, water mixed boils will stay wet longer, so you don't need them. Um, Debbie said, I found one brand was poorer than another brand for the tear-off palettes. Yeah, well, okay, well, maybe, Manji, you've got a brand that's um, just not quite right. and Maybe try a different one. Sandy says, yep, that's how I'm feeling going through ABA. I've had to slow down and do a step at a time. Trying to have enough saleable inventory takes time since I'm a relatively new artist. I look at it as great practice. Yeah, so if you're going through the Artist Business Academy, it, it is important that you do the assignments because otherwise it's just entertainment. Right? And I'm not that entertaining, to be honest. You know, there's probably better people to be entertained by. Um, so the Artist Business Academy is a step-by-step -step building process. It's like a, each 
brick in a wall when we're building it up gradually, right? So it is important that you get uh, go through a lesson. If there's an assignment there that you stop and you don't carry on until you've actually followed through on the assignment, really important. So um, yeah, good, good point there, Sandy. And look, if it takes you a bit longer, then it does, you know what I mean? Like it's not a competition, it's not a race. Some people will get to that sort of $500 a month mark in three or four months, some people might take a year, right? But does it matter as long as you keep just moving forward? And, and the real key to it is just being consistent, allocating a certain amount of time each week. Um, and, you know, 10 hours a week is probably the sort of time frame you want. And, um, and just being consistent with following through. Gary said, with Artilia, I use glaze and fast medium fixer, but as Rob says, there's no rehydrating, but it will brighten your colors. There you go, it's a good tip from Gary. Uh, Jenny said, I've got the Artilia Retarder because of our summer weather. Yeah, you definitely need the Retarder. Um, but I, looked, I got it down to a point with acrylics where I only use the Retarder um, for skies usually where I wanted to have extra blending. But even then, I used it with my bigger acrylics that were a bit, bit looser, I used a spray bottle and I just made sure that the canvas surface during the summer period was um, well hydrated, right? And so I started off with very wet, loose paint and then I build it up thicker paint after that so um, it's just a matter of figuring out a, a working process with acrylics if you're in a, a warmer climate that um, that works for you all right Brett Whitley yeah that's the one um, Oh, that's an interesting comment. Gary says, I, I get the feeling that doing the Artist Business Academy course and working to create paintings uh, makes me feel my painting is getting better. I find myself thinking of myself more as a professional artist. Well, I mean, that's the key point of it, I guess, of what we're doing. Um, but just the consistency of painting and painting with a purpose, like a plan and a strategy, will definitely make you a better artist. No question. Sandy says, yep, that's how I'm feeling going through ABA as well. I had to slow down and do a step at a time. Trying to have enough saleable inventory takes time. Um, yep, so yeah, just take your time with it if, if you need be. Jenny said, what is the cheaper brand of WMOs you recommend again, please? I have a lot of acrylic. Um, cheaper brand of WMOs, <coughs> pardon me. If you're in Australia and wherever else they sell Montmartre, so I think parts of Asia and maybe New Zealand, is this H2O brand, okay? And it's about $7 a tube, so we use half a dozen tubes. So you know, for about $40 or $50, you can get yourself started. The only thing is you'll find a little bit of separation with the linseed oil and the pigment. Don't worry about it. Just get your palette knife and mush it all back together. Um, that's a good way to get started, and they're reasonably good quality for the, uh, for the price. Um, um, um. Cobra is the more expensive brand, or the most expensive brand. So the Montmartre H2O is the uh, the cheap one if you just want to give it a try. Um, Gary said, I put retarder in my paint because I use a plastic box palette and the paint is permanently with the lid on. Oh yeah, that's a good idea too. Sandy, that's okay, Sandy. Uh, my mum. What brand of WMO are best? I think the Cobra brand is the best WMO of the ones I've tried. This one here, Cobra. It's by a company called Royal Talons, which I think are a UK company or Dutch maybe. Um, Cobra. Okay, WMOs. They're very strongly pigmented and a really beautiful paint. Um, I'd use them all the time, except there's a bit of a supply issue with the larger tubes. Uh, good question, Pauline. Pauline said, is there any one of your courses you most enjoy producing, filming, and got the most satisfaction from? I, I would say the um, colour mixing course has probably been the course that has had the biggest impact on um, our students and one I enjoyed doing in particular. Um, 
you know, in many ways, I look back, look back in the last 10 years, and when I started 10 years ago, I, um, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I kind of wish that the knowledge I have today about filming and production and editing and how to uh, put all that together, I wished I had that at the very start. Right? Um, and in some ways, I kind of wish I could go back and redo the whole 10 years with better production and so on. But, you know, you can't. And I think the information in them is still valid. But, yeah, probably the colour mixing course. Um, a difficult one because I've done so much. I mean, the, the probably one of the biggest challenges I have is I get sick of seeing myself on video and hearing myself talking, right, because I've done so much of it. And that's something I... So sort of, it doesn't taint my view of the courses or anything, but it, it it's a personal challenge, you know. When you when you've done hundreds of hours of video, <laughs> you do get sick of seeing yourself. Steve says, when you talk of taking time to do the ABA course, being an average of ten hours, is that just for the course, or does that include painting? Now, Steve, what I mean by that is, if you're going to the, the the first course we're going through in the Artist Business Academy is how to start selling your artwork, right? So it's a sort of a the first stage of learning to become a artist who earns an income from their artwork. And our sort of group goal with that course is to get people to $500 a month, right? Where you're earning $500 a month consistently and regularly, not one-off sales that happen randomly, but consistent, regular, reliable, repeatable sales of your artwork of $500 a month, right? 5,000 a year. And, um, so when I say 10 hours a week, you're probably going to need 10 hours a week at least to get to that point, right? Because that means you've got to produce enough paintings each week or each month and you need to put them into the marketplace and you need to ship, package and ship the ones that are sold and you need to obviously um, work on the social media side as well. So that, that's what your 10 hours a week is. Um, going through the actual course content and learning, that would be additional time, right? But in the early stages, you probably would do 10 hours a week of going through the course and doing the assignments. But as you transition into now, I know what I'm doing, um, I don't need to go through the course, it's going to be a 10 hour a week project to, to earn a, um, you know, to get up to that sort of level. Beverly says, there are so many good courses, just do them all. <laughs> Thank you, Beverly. Gary said, interested in your thoughts on oil paints like the Geneva brand? Um, not familiar with them, Gary, so I, I can't give you my thoughts, but... Certainly curious to find out more. I might have a look at that later on today. Um, I'm going down to Brisbane next week, so I'll drop into Art Shed and see if they've got any, and I'll have a look. Um, Lindley says, that's good. My Cobra water mix boils just arrived today. I found it hard to get the H2O. Mop Mart brand. Oh, that's interesting. $2 shops and so on, usually. Or Art Shed Online, if you're in Australia. Um, you're about to get those. Um, my mum, just coming back here. Can you use, uh, we've done that one. Can you describe an impressionistic painting, an impressionist painting? Uh, well, the impressionists, the, there are different impressionist groups. There's um, the French impressionists, so they were the sort of original impressionists. Monet, Renoir, um, Pizarro, Sicily, um, artists like that. They were the French impressionists. Um, and then we have the Australian Impressionists, who are not of the same sort of genre, but classified as Impressionists from the Heidelberg School, like Arthur Streeton, Frederick McCubbin, Tom Roberts, Charles Conda. Uh, then you've got the Russian Impressionists, which are different again in their approach and style, but still they're creating an impression of a scene rather than trying to do a realism version of the scene. Um, so I, I posted on our Facebook page yesterday five links um, to different websites that you can go to to learn more about art and so on. So jump on those links and, and go and look at Impressionist Painting um, and that'll give you a much clearer definition than what I can. And I'm glad you're loving the ABA. That's cool. Morning, Kathy. Linda says, funny thing is that although you have seen yourself in video and are tired of it, um, for new students, it's all a first. Yeah, well, that's true. That's what I have to keep in mind is that it's the first time they're seeing it, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not so much tired of it. I guess like anybody, we don't like photos of ourselves and, you know, it's, it's more self-conscious than anything, I guess. 
Pauline said, is Cobra available on Amazon? What size tube did you hold up? Um, Cobra may be available on Amazon, Pauline, but in if you're in uh, the UK, um, Jackson's Art Supplies, that's who I've been buying them from, right? Um, so uh, they'd, they'd be your best bet, and they're good prices. 150 mil, this big one, but they, there's a supply issue with those, so that's why I've, I'm not currently using them, because... This is what's readily available, and these are 40 mil, but you know, I go through that over lunch, kind of, so I need the bigger tubes. But um, Jackson's Art Supplies in the UK, you can go to their online store, and um, they're good prices, really good. Sujata says, thank you, Rod, for restating that. I need more time to do exercises and get ready for selling than I thought I would need, and i got to take my time. I might not get to $500 a month for six months, but I'll get there sooner or later. Yeah, look, some people might take two or three years even. Um, look, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it's really, we're all on a personal journey, and um, I, I wouldn't worry. I, I sort of said $500 a month in six months just to give people a bit of a signpost along their journey, but it's going to be different for everyone. So just take your time. It's better to take your time and do the exercises properly and well than to rush through them and then not really have the foundations in place, I think. Um, it, Donna says, try Jackson's UK. Yep. Um, yeah, half the price for what you get them here in Australia. Yeah. And Jackson's, if you're in Australia, um, Jackson's UK actually have... Uh, a warehouse in Australia with all their stock, so it comes really quickly as well. It's a brilliant system. But don't confuse them with Jackson's Art and Drawing Supplies in WA. That's a different business, right? And they're a great business as well. Um, but Jackson's UK, yeah, great option. Peter said, colour mixing courses are must-do and must-revisit. Yes, thank you, Peter. Um, Gary said, yes, I redid it and found if you mix the right colour, you put it on the canvas with one stroke and that's it. Yeah, the less less strokes, the better. Um, keep it fresh. So getting the colour right certainly helps. Sonia said, I'm starting to do two of the same painting now, build up the inventory that don't look exactly the same. Yeah, and Sonia, that's perfectly fine. You know, like I, I redo the same paintings over and over and they always turn out slightly differently. I don't have... 10 of the same painting on the market at once, you know, you sort of come back to that painting I did three months ago and do it again and do a different version of it and that's that's no problem at all. My pleasure, Debbie. Um, Amazon have a sale on the 21st and 22nd of June, so check it out for paint supplies, everyone. Um... Can I put the link of Jackson UK on the activity wall? You want me to Google it, Carlene, rather than you Google it? Um, Jackson Art Supplies. There we go. Pop it on the Facebook pages as well. Bum, 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 bum. There you go. There's the link for you all. Um, Sarah in VA. Should I register for AA now or in July when you mentioned a possible discount price? Um, the price is... For, so for the Artist Business Academy... Um, it's going to be nine ninety seven. Will be the entry price US um, later this year. So anybody who wants to register before then, um, you can get it for four ninety seven US. So if you are interested in registering for the Artist Business Academy, um, just contact our support desk and they'll give you the link. But what we will be doing in a month or two is I'll do a little three or four day um, live challenge around building your art business, and we'll obviously promote that price. But it'll be the same price. It'll be four ninety seven US. Um, so if you want to, if you're interested in selling your artwork and building a business around your art, better to join now rather than at the end of the year because you're going to pay double the price. Uh, um, so yeah, just contact our support and they'll give you the link for that. Uh, I looked. Up, no, not, uh, 
Okay, you've got the right one there, Callie. That's good. Thanks, Catherine. Gary said, I saw a woman on Blue Thumb. She just keeps doing the same painting. She calls it uh, painting a day, one, two, and so on, and she's selling heaps. Um, that sounds like my friend Liliana. She uh, she says a, her names of her paintings, she has one name, and then she yeah has a, a number on them, and they're all variations on a theme, and she is absolutely killing it. Just opened up a big studio, and um, she sells a ton of artwork. So, yeah. So maybe there's a lesson there. Don't get too caught up in the name. <laughs> and um, and the other thing is, don't think you have to paint a huge variety of painting. In fact, you're better off condensing it right down. So what she does, she does these beach scenes with a particular look and feel, and they're all very similar. right? And then she does these um, water lily scenes, which are fairly unique, not like anything I've seen before. But she's done hundreds of them, and they're all very similar. right? And then she's doing these floral paintings, and um, and they're all very similar, right? But they're all different, but they're all very similar. Part of what makes them very similar is um, her palette doesn't change. So the same, it's a unity of her color scheme. Um, and also the way she applies the paint, you know? So her own mark making is uniquely hers. And, um, and so what that does is it gives your artwork a voice. So you don't want to be going too wide and too broad. You want to narrow it down and do variations on a theme and that's what you become known for, right? So all the artists who are doing well on Blue Thumb, um, and I use Blue Thumb for those not in Australia. I only refer to Blue Thumb because it's the one I'm most familiar with. But if you look at Saatchi or um, Art Finder or any of those, right, the artists that tend to do well have a very narrow voice, right? They're, and they're concentrated and that's what they get known for. And then it builds a demand of people wanting to have one of their paintings because of that consistency, right? Um, Cobra 150 is available on the Amazon Canada website. There you go. Uh, Manju said, I know that light is faster than sound, but today I learned that text is faster than video. The link appeared in the chat before you said it. <laughs> well, that's... Yeah. Constraints of live streaming. She paints lollipop landscapes, says Gary. Yeah, well, if she's selling a lot of them, people must have a, uh, a sugar fixation for them. Sarah said, the values course is amazing, helping me understand. That's great, Sarah. I'm, I'm so glad. Uh, Jenny, I can't think of Liliana's last name right now, but if you uh, scroll through the just sold on uh, Blue Thumb, go back over the last week, you'll find one of her paintings there for sure. She's a lovely lady and um, does an amazing job as a professional artist. A great example of what, it, you know, what a professional artist looks like and what they do. Okay, Jeanette says, started a new painting this morning and totally forgot about the coffee chat. <laughs> well, glad you made it now, Jeanette. Welcome. Um, Pauline says, Hokusui did a series of Mount Fugitive that were very similar. Yeah, all great artists through history have done series of paintings that have a very tight focus, like Monet's water lilies, right? There you go, Liliana Djidjevic. But she's just one example. There's lots and lots of examples. Amanda Brooks, who lives just down the road here, she sells a ton of paintings, and um, very similar, very similar style, look and feel. Uh... Tatiana says, my friend artist from California paints dead roses on chairs. She sells them for big bucks. Yeah, there you go. Just goes to show that the scope for buying art is bigger than it's ever been, I believe, you know, because art's more accessible today. You know, go back 20 years ago, and um, to be exposed to art, you'd have to actually walk into an art gallery, right, or a local art show, which might happen once a year. Um, so, you know, going into an art gallery is pretty intimidating, especially with some of the snooty-nosed people who worked in art galleries. Um, don't take offence if you work in an art gallery, but you know what I mean. So not everybody felt comfortable going into an art gallery. So it was kind of this exclusive thing, right, to see original artwork. But with the internet, it's become far more accessible to people. And with the advent of 
online art galleries, my belief is more art's being sold than at any point in history in the world. However, with that comes more artists trying to sell their artwork. So we need to be smarter. We need to have a plan and a strategy and work that through. You can't do things randomly and expect to do well in the online art sales world. And quite often, I'm a member of a few different uh, Facebook forums. I don't actively get involved, but I occasionally look at the posts. And quite often you see somebody having a, a dummy spit because they listed their five paintings up and um, haven't made a sale in six months, right? And so the online art gallery world isn't a magical thing that if you just put a few paintings up, you're going to make sales. It requires a strategy, a plan. Um, consistency is one of the biggest keys, being there all the time, new paintings all the time, um, and positioning yourself in the right way, right? And that takes time and it requires some knowledge. You can't do well, well, I shouldn't say you can't, it's difficult to do well as a working artist trying to sell your artwork in online galleries if you're not studying and applying um, business and marketing sort of principles, right? You can't just expect your artwork to do all the work for you. You know, a lot of artists think their art should speak for itself. In a, in a very crowded environment online today, that's just crazy thinking, crazy thinking, right? Yes, your art's great and you're a brilliant artist and all that and people should love it. But if you don't know how to get people to look at it and, and to position yourself above all the other artists, then you're just not going to sell artwork, right? So you need to be strategic, you need to educate yourself, you need to think of it in a business-like way and there are things that you can do that will help position you above the majority, right? Teresa said, we talked about creating... Uh, fog in a painting, I looked into it and purchased zinc white. What is your take on that? I've never used zinc white. Um, I only ever used titanium white. I don't know that you need zinc white to be able to paint fog. Um, but look, uh, I'm glad you brought it up because I have a some photos from when I was in Wales one time, which has some fog. Um, so I'll just put Wales... Um, I'll look it up and we, we might tackle that in our next live stream. I'll just make a little note. Um, <coughs> uh, basically what you need for fog is, is grey. You need, you need to know how to mix greys. Um, sounds like you live in a greater area for artists. Um, I think in this day and age, most areas have a lot of artists. Um, I have good subject matter that appeals to me here, um, but in Noosa alone, last year when we did the open studio, there was 90 artists who, had open, who took part in the open studio, right? This year, I think it'll probably be about 120 artists. So to take part in an open studio, you have to be reasonably good as an artist. Um, if you're just a hobby artist, you're probably not going to be in the open studio because it requires expenditure of money and um, you need to have a stock of artwork and there's a fair bit to it. So there's 120 just in Noosa, right? Um, so there's more artists today than ever before as well. Um, however, I think most of them aren't, they're, they're thinking too much like artists, not enough like art business people to do well. So it doesn't take much to switch your brain over to that art business being professional in your approach. Celia says, I like impressionism, but sometimes wonder if I should try realism. What do you think? Uh, well, if you think you should try it, then give it a try, right? I don't have the patience for realism. You know, to do realism, you're really spending a lot more hours on each painting. Um, I think realism's difficult to, to generate an income stream from if you're trying to sell your artwork. Um, but if you're a very patient, particular, detailed person with a very keen eye, observational skills, then yeah, realism could work. My personal view of realism is, um, you know, we've got great cameras these days. Why would you try and replicate the scene exactly as it is? To me, art is about emotion and story and, you know, energy and um, in intuitive interpretation of, of a subject. Um, none of which I think fits into the realism approach. Um, but that's not to discount the realism approach. I greatly admire realist painters, but I think if somebody re recreates a scene in lifelike way, I'd rather go and see the scene, if, if, if you know what I mean, or, or photos are good for that. Um, Gary said, so 
I think it'd be difficult to have one foot in each, Gary, because realism is a very demanding and exacting uh, practice, I, I believe. Um, it doesn't suit my personality at all. At all. Um, I do think you have to paint your personality. Gary said, is it, it is good to look at the just sold and blue thumb and concentrate on the artists that have multiple sales and take inspiration from those. Yeah, I've been doing that for a number of years, Gary, and it gives you a bit of a, um, you, you'll see that there's probably 50 artists in blue thumb who are there every week pretty much with sales. And so they're good ones to study, but um, not necessarily what they're painting, but their attitude and their approach and their consistency. What I've noticed with, with those artists, if you... Uh, you know, go and like their Facebook page and their Instagram, you'll just see that they're there all the time, consistently. And that's what's really driving, you know, good art obviously is important, but good art without consistency means no sales or, or the occasional sale, but selling well is good art with a great attitude and energy and consistency in what you're doing. And, and they're the ones who, are, who dominate the uh, just solves for sure. Jenny said, did you say the name of the Million a Year artist? I might have missed it. Um, no, I didn't. There's two artists on the Sunshine Coast, I believe, who make a million dollars a year. I, I don't know who they are, actually. I, I was um, There's a, uh, a big framer um, canvas shop here in the Sunshine Coast, and, um, and they told somebody I know about the fact that there are two artists doing a million dollars a year. I suspect one of them is Tracy Keller, who recently opened up a um, retail shop in Hastings Street in in, uh, in Noosa? Oh, so I suspect she's one of them. Um, Meryl says, "Where is a good gallery in Noosa for my art friend to visit? Do you have any paintings in a gallery?" I don't have any paintings in a gallery at the moment, Meryl. Um, in Noosa, there's a couple of galleries in in um, Hastings Street, um, but they're very modern, abstract. Um, you can go to Tracy Keller's gallery, but um, that's a particular style. There's there's really not that many galleries here. The best gallery on the Sunshine Coast is in Montville, which is you know, 40 minute drive from Noosa. Um, that's the best gallery by far, and that's worth a trip to Montville to have a look at that one. Jenny said, Amanda Brooks' paintings are so Aussie, so bright. Yeah, she does a good job. She's also sort of, I won't say she mass produces them, but she uh, churns out a lot of the same type of paintings. Um, Catherine said, what type of white house paint did you say you use for the first coat? Just uh, a sealer, like an undercoat paint um, is all I use. Gary's added four in one British primer. That, that'd do the job, absolutely. Sonia said, your courses have certainly happened my mind. That's good, thank you, Sonia. Um, it just just a sealer, like whatever they put over plasterboard in a house um, or on weatherboards on the outside, just a, a sealing paint. Just go and ask your local hardware store. No, and they'll tell you. Tell them you want to seal um, some MDF board, right? Um, and really, the first coat, the sealer, is to sort of waterproof it. Um, that's why you want to do front and back. Jenny said, have you been to St. Ives in Cornwall? The light there is something to be seen. It's amazing. No wonder. I have been, Jenny. Yeah, about, um, when was that? About 2010, maybe, I'm thinking it was, or 2008, somewhere around there. Went to St. Ives and, and all around Cornwall and absolutely loved it and I can't wait to get back there. Although that doesn't look look like a possibility anytime soon, but yeah, absolutely loved it. I took hundreds of photos, and then I was on a computer that um, the computer died, unfortunately, so I lost all my photos. Um, which is a bit of a bugger, but love that area, as well as Whitby, the, the North Yorkshire coast up there. <coughs> um, Yeah. Yeah, Gary said realism is pointless, and Jenny said I uh, disagree. It's all in the eye of the viewer. 
And yeah, I mean, I kind of understand what Gary's saying, and I also agree with Jenny. You know, different people, different things appeal to different people. Um, so there's there's the art market so huge that there's room for everyone, um, but realism, as I said, doesn't really appeal to me. But I do greatly admire those who can create realism. Um, yes, Sandy, backupping is the key. I need to get everything off computers and up into the cloud. That's uh, another project. <laughs> Jenny said, I have a member of my family going. I will ask her to take some pics. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, all around that Cornwall coast there is just amazing, beautiful, beautiful part of the world. But, you know, it's like anywhere. People who live in Cornwall probably don't see it. You know, um, they wonder why all these tourists are going there. A um, hundred and something years ago, there was an art colony in Cornwall. There still is, actually. Like, there's a group of artists there and lots of little art shops. Um, and also the Tate Gallery has a branch in uh, St Ives, Cornwall. Um, but, yeah, go back over a hundred years ago, there was a, a big art colony there. And um, for those who, are, who have seen the master's analysis of Ethel Carrick that I did, um, so Ethel Carrick was a, uh, a British artist, and she married E. Phillips Fox, an Australian artist, and I believe they met in St Ives at the art colony there. Thank you, Meryl, appreciate that, and Gail. Jenny said, Tate Gallery, amazing, expensive to go in, but great to see. <coughs> Well, it was, a, it was walking into the Tate Gallery in 2008 that got me hooked on painting, seeing the J.W. Turner paintings. Uh, where are we up to here? Um, um, um. Celia says, do agree with you. Pauline says, there's one tiny gallery with nine-month waiting list to exhibit. Um, I can't say the name of your town. Tidfill? Mirtha Tidfill? There you go. The Welsh names always get me. Um, yeah, most galleries are like that. You know, there's a, there is a gallery down here called the Kuroi Butter Factory, which has been converted into a gallery. And um, to pay to play, like you have to pay to hire the space. Um, and if you want to have a little exhibition there with yourself or a couple of other artists, it's about an 18-month waiting list and, you know, it's a couple of grand at least to, to exhibit there. Cheers, Gary. Good to see you, mate. Uh, Lindley says, a friend just dropped off a heap of MDF offcuts. Fantastic. That's awesome. Thanks, Winnie. You have a great weekend too. Um, alrighty. How thick is your MDF board? It's about three mil, which I think somebody worked out was about an eighth of an inch um, last time we chatted. Well, friends... It's been lovely chatting with you all. Hope you found today valuable. And um, we're going to wrap it up there. Um, now, next week, and um, I apologise about the, we had a, mi uh, a mix up with the advanced live stream yesterday. I had it on the calendar. and um, But in the Wednesday live stream, I said I can't do it, so I should have updated the calendar. So I apologise to anybody who was inconvenienced. But let me just look next week because I'm going to Brisbane. Um, yep, so next Wednesday we will do our live stream. There won't be an advanced live stream on Thursday because I will be in Brisbane. Um, and then we'll do our Friday coffee chat. So Wednesday and Friday, and then the week after, I'll put it in my calendar right now for an advanced live stream. And I'll update the calendar, advanced live. Um, so there you go, friends. Take it easy, enjoy your painting. Oh, you've emailed the painting. Okay, hang, hang loose, everybody. I completely forgot about that. Um, let's, so if you're still on the line with us, then um, hang about, and we will um, we will have a look at Sonia's painting here. You've sent me two. Is it the same one? I think it is. Okay. So for those who want to play along and help Sonia name her painting... Okay, then it's probably not a bad exercise for all of us to learn how to um, name our paintings. Just give me one sec while I find it. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Okay. There it 
this looks like one of the Capity Valley paintings, uh, Sonia, um, that we did. Pictures. What file format is it in? JPEG. Try this one. So what if I can't computer's not finding it unfortunately. PC pictures. Um, if I can't get it oh there we are, all files. There we go. I know what I was doing wrong. Um, oh you've got two. Okay. Well I'll just do one. Okay, we'll just do one. So this is Sonia's painting. And Sonia's looking for a name for her painting. Could I open it up the right way? Oh, okay, you should be able to see it now. Cool. So what name can we give this painting, right? From the point of view of trying to sell it, um, what name would we give this painting? Anyone want to volunteer a name? Not silly names, let's keep it serious. <laughs> Don't be nervous, Sonia, it's all good. Um, Uh, cheers to those of you who, who are, uh, have to leave us. Nice chatting with you all. Shadow Peak. There's a great name. <coughs> um, and you can tell a whole story about, you know, how the shadows um, remind you at the end of the day and so on. Gary says a place in the country. Nostalgia says Tatiana. Gail says going home. Catherine, down home. All right. The home place, says Gail. So a lot of, lot of uh, home sort of ideas coming up here, which is good. Sentinel. Uh, I thought she said it was futuristic. I don't know about that, Meryl. I don't, don't recall seeing that. Um, White House Peak. Morning Light, Homestead in Shadow. There you go. So um, I'd write down every one of those and just use each of those names for the next 20 paintings that you do. <laughs> right um, it's interesting that everyone's focused on the sort of home feel of it um, which you know is what's probably going to sell it creating a story about you know it reminds you of your childhood and how homely it was when the um, you know you'd come home from school and the smoke was coming out of the chimney and you know what I mean like telling a story like that and connecting it to the emotions people have with their home and a sense of security and safety things like that that's what you need, right? So come out with a name. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, and as you can see, people have come up with some good, some good suggestions there. Um, what else have we got over here? Twin Sheds, says Rosalie. Old Homestead, says Cecile. Coming Home, says Beverly. Hillview, I like that one. Hillview is good. Old Home Place, Home on the Farm, the Home Place. Um, Road to Home, Wonders of the World, Mountain View, Morning Sunlight. Outback Serenity, Hidden Valley, Country Life. There you go. There's about 20 or 30 names for you. And um, Gail says, yes, reminds you of home or a grandparent's home. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the sort of thing where I talk about having a story for your painting. It doesn't need to be some big elaborate story. You just do a painting, give it a little simple name like, um, um, you know, Home in the Valley, and just tell a little story about your, you know, I used to love going over to my grandmother's home in the valley and um, she'd always have scones baking ready for when we got there, right? It only needs a couple of paragraphs of a little story that evokes an emotion for somebody and that's what will connect them to the painting, right? Home to roost. <laughs> Very good. All right, friends. It's been great. Really enjoyed chatting with you all um, and I uh, hope that helps Sonia. But really, it's not just Sonia we're talking about here, is it? Every single one of you come out with names for your paintings. You can see there, there's a bit of a brain dump of ideas that you can use. Have a great week. Great weekend, and I'll, um, we'll be talking next week. Scones waiting, yes. <laughs>